batteries. Batteries are very expensive. I mean, these 9 volts, they're like $4 a piece. And I can't afford that on my meager electronics budget. I mean, I go through these things like water. And half the time, I'm just sitting at my bench top. So what am I going to do today on Basic Electronics Episode 13? I'm going to build a simple power supply using a transformer and a bridge rectifier and some other discrete components. So I'm going to show you how to make this step by step and how to save thousands on batteries. So what I have here or let me give you a quick background. I go through 9 volts like crazy, and half the time I'm just sitting, building stuff right here. So why waste batteries right here when I have a nice power strip right next to me that you cannot see? So, what I'm going to do is just build a power supply so I don't have to spend money on this anymore and can just use the cheap wall power and convert it. So, why don't you just use the wall power? I'm sure many of you know this. But there is 120 volts AC in here, in this cable right now that's plugged in. And that sounds great. But if I plug that into LEDs, they're just going to blow up. That's not great. That would basically blow my budget right there, just be a waste. It's not a good deal, and you can die. Because AC voltage can be dangerous. So what we have to do is we have to step that down to a usable voltage. Stuff flying everywhere. So... What I have here is a plug that accepts this power cable that I have. This is a three-prong cable. There's hot, neutral, and uh, ground, which is nice for uh, grounding yourself when you're working with logic gates and stuff that are static sensitive. And I have this hooked up to a transformer that I salvage out of a stereo. Uh, I don't think it was a stereo. It was like a radio or something. And uh, I'm just going to give you a quick disclaimer here. This is dangerous. Trying to salvage one of these big transformers out of something. Because you don't know what they're rated for. You don't know if they're safe. You don't know if they're still good. I mean, I, I was willing to take those risks. I would, If you're going to do this project, go to Radio Shack, spend, I think, 12 bucks, and you can get a near-identical transformer. You know what the ratings are. It's labeled correctly and it's safe. This is the quick and cheap version which I was able to do this morning. So I took this is actually and another thing, this uh, power connector is was incorrectly wired by some Chinese kid. I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying this, when I tested it, this is actually the uh, hot wire, which is actually usually black, and this is usually the neutral or and black is usually the hot wire. It, this is actually the neutral wire. It's very confusing. So on my transformer, which had the correctly labeled hot and neutral wires, I had to hook them up backwards, black to white, white to black. Very confusing. I hope I didn't just really confuse you, but that's what I had to do because it was wired correctly. So make sure it's wired correctly before you attempt this project. So what I did was I soldered it up, electrical taped over it so that the wires don't show it out. 99 cent electrical tape, save your life. And uh, the, the ground wire, I'm not worried about right now. I don't need that for this project. On my transformer, there are these two yellow wires. I tested them. They're putting out some sort of weird voltage. I do not need those. Keep those out of the way if you have them. Then I have three wires. This is a center tap, tap transformer. When I tested it with no load, is like 30, 0, 30, or 60 volts between the two red wires. If you look up other videos on YouTube about transformers, you can figure out what all that means. I'm not going to go into detail, so. With a load, it dropped down, or at least with a light load, it dropped to about 20 volts on, the, on one rail. So 40 volts across the two red wires is what I expect. No idea how much current. So what I do is I have to use a bridge rectifier to convert the AC voltage coming out of the transformer. That's what a transformer does. Converts AC into, D or into a more AC, just different voltage level. And uh, I use this bridge rectifier. It costs... Actually, I got this one for free out of a power supply. 
as you know I love salvaging. But you hook it up. Basically on the thing, I can't really show you. There's two little, I'll draw them on this white board back here. If I can find the marker. They're on the bridge rectifier. It looks something like this. Yours may be different. There's four wires, and then two of them, usually in the middle, have little sine waves by them. And then mine has a negative and a positive. You take the transformer, which is this box, and you hook the two secondary wires up to the sine wave pins on the transformer. Then these become your uh, DC rails. I hope you could see that. There's other videos on it if you need to check it out. I'm just showing you a how-to. So, what I do is I'm going to... I'm going to make this a single rail power supply, but it's the exact same for a dual rail power supply. You just use two bridge rectifiers. I'm going to hook the one of the red wires to one of the sine wave pins on the bridge rectifier. Like so. I'm going to hook the other red wire to the other sine wave pin on the bridge rectifier. I have no idea what the technical terms are. I didn't look them up. But, I mean, as long as you know what I'm talking about, you shouldn't burn your house down. Then, this on my bridge rectifier is the negative uh, pin, I mean. And then this, to, okay, and I'm going to do some more explanation. Basically, what happens when you put it through the bridge rectifier is if that's the way the waveform you get is like that, and that's not super useful considering that there are large gaps like there, there, and so on. So what you do is you take a large capacitor rated for a very high voltage, highest voltage you can get, and still have a large capacitance. I have a 71 volt, 8,200 microfarad capacitor. And that, considering the max that this thing puts out is 60 volts, that should be fine. So, what happens when you put the capacitor in there, it charges and smooths out the bumps when you're drawing a lot of current. So you have two perfectly, like, assuming that's a negative and that's a positive, and with my power supply it's like 30 volts. I hope you can read that. So, this, obviously, being the negative wire, goes into the negative on the capacitor. And same thing for positive. You take the positive of the bridge rectifier, and uh, I'm trying to do this. It's not working. For love of God. Okay, got it. That goes into the positive, of course. Double check all your work. Make sure no wires are shorting out. And then carefully, if you are building this project, very carefully plug it in and be ready to unplug it. I recommend putting a switch in line. I'm going to finalize this project and show you. I just don't have the parts right now and I want to do a how-to. Plug it in. If there's smoke or fire, turn it off. This is where having a power strip is nice, because then you can just shut off everything at once. Okay, no smoke, no fire, nobody died. Excellent. So I just want to see how long this video is getting. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. I have this cool analog multimeter here. Don't see many of those anymore. And I'm going to measure the voltage. It should be about 60 volts. Let's see what I get. Negative to negative. And... Yeah, what do you know? Actually, it's a little bit closer to 75 volts. But uh, it's hard to read these from the distance that I was standing at. So... Same thing if you're doing a dual rail power supply, and then what I would do is I would put a voltage regulator on here, like a 7805, a 7812, or you can make an adjustable voltage regulator, which I'm going to do, with an LM317 and an LM337. And I basically just built a power supply for free. So, as an ending, just as an ending clip here, I have this heat sink thing that I found in my parts bin that doesn't fit any of my chips and I have these insulated player cutter things, I don't, I don't know what they are and I'm going to take this charge capacitor just for your entertainment and discharge it rapidly and you will see sparks 
And because it looks cool, I am going to turn off this lamp. And you will see a bright flash in three, two, one. So, that's why you don't want to touch anything here. I hope you learned that. And there was so much current in here, it basically arc welded itself to the heat sink. So, these voltages are, actually I'm going to unplug this, I left this plugged in stupidly. Be sure to turn off everything when you're not using it, don't leave it lying around, especially if you have small children or pets running around. They could be vaporized, as you kind of just saw. It just, it actually really did a number to my capacitor leads. So, that's going to do it for this week. I hope you build this project, but I wouldn't do this if you're new to electronics. I'm going to, this is kind of a closing disclaimer here. I'm not responsible for anything that happens. Line voltage, which is another term for the voltage you get out of your wall, can be very dangerous. Don't play with it. Don't, if you're not ready for it, don't do it and take every precaution. I'm making sure nothing is shorting out. I'm not, I mean, I did research before doing this project. Be very careful. These voltages are dangerous. And as you saw, even high voltage DC, still very dangerous. It can, I'm going to show you, it can basically vaporize a heat sink. So, as you can see, very fun project, very cool project, huge money saver. Just be very careful if you do this. So that's going to do it for this week. I will show you the power supply video when I get the enclosure that I need. But that's going to do it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is going to be it for Basic Electronics, episode 13.